In this video, we talk about standard instrument departures. That's coming up next. Hello some pilots and welcome back to another Microsoft Flight Simulator video. Today we're going through the standard instrument departure. We'll look at a typical departure chart and then fly an example. So what is a standard instrument departure and why do we have them? Standard instrument departures, also known as SIDs, are published flight procedures that are followed by aircraft on an IFR flight plan immediately after departure. SIDs allow aircraft to depart in airspace following a predefined route, also sometimes with altitude and speed restrictions. It helps them navigate adjacent airspaces, terrain and arriving traffic. So we are here inside the A32NX parked at London's Heathrow International Airport. I've set up a short flight from Heathrow to Amsterdam and we're going to demonstrate a standard instrument departure. So first things first, what we need to do is have a look at our route and see where we are going. After leaving Heathrow, our first waypoint is the Brookmans Park VOR. So by choosing which runway we're going to take off of, that will determine which standard instrument departure we use heading to Brookmans Park. So if I go back into the cockpit and check the winds to decide the runway we're going to use, if I go over here to the fly pad, and we check the wind for our departure airport, it is 320 at 8 knots. So therefore, we're going to be taking off runway 27 right. So going back to the charts, we're looking for a departure taking us from runway 27 right to the Brookmans Park VOR. So I know already it's going to be one of these two because it already says Brookmans Park. So if we have a look at this one, Brookmans Park 7 Foxtrot, this is the one we want to use. So let's go ahead and go through this charts and what it shows us. Starting at the very top, you can see we have the ICAO code and the IATA code for the departure airport. The date, this chart is valid. The date the chart is effective from. Where the chart is for. Here we have some information at the top that shows the area control frequency, the airport elevation, the transition altitude, and some instructions. If you read through this, it says when instructed, contact London Control after takeoff. Report call sign, SID designates a current altitude and initial cleared altitude. SIDs include noise preferential routes. Cruising level will be issued after takeoff by London Control. Do not climb above SID levels until instructed by HC. Expect close in obstacles. Then here we have the standard instrument departure designator. Brookmans Park 7 Foxtrot and Brookmans Park 7 Golf. So the one would be for 27 right and the one would be for 27 left. If you have a look down here, you can see 7 Foxtrot is 27 right and 7 Golf is 27 left. And here is the in words, the departure route in words. Let's have a look at the route. Yeah, it says speed max 250 knots below flight level 100 unless otherwise instructed. So let's see what this route shows us. It shows us we'll be taking off from runway 27 right, Brookmans Park Foxtrot. We're going to be climbing up towards the Burnham NDB. Then we're going to start a right turn. Climbing between 4,000 feet, but not above 6,000 feet. Continuing towards the Chilton NDB. Above 5,000 feet, but not above 6,000 feet. And then continuing heading 064 to the Brookmans Park BOR at 6,000 feet. Yeah, lost comms, in case of lost communications, comply with routes and altitude restrictions of SID. So if you had to lose your radio during this departure, you would continue flying exactly this departure. Sometimes ATC could vector you away from these exact routes or altitudes, depending on the traffic. Average track mileage, 32 nautical miles to Brookmans Park BOR. Due to interaction with other routes, do not climb above 6,000 feet until cleared by ATC. Warning, no turns below 590 feet. So because this departure uses NDBs and VORs, you can actually fly this in your Cessna or an other general aviation aircraft that doesn't have the navigation display or an MCDU. But you get more complicated r nav routes that require GPS. Continuing down the chart, we can see here, cross appropriate noise monitoring terminal at or above 1090. Thereafter, maintain a minimum climb gradient of 4%. 
Here's your ground speeds and your vertical feet per minute. If unable to comply with set altitudes, climb gradient in form ATC. And then here is your departure in words. So Brookman's Park 7 Foxtrot, runway 27 right. Climb straight ahead, intercept 297 degree ba bearing towards Burnham NDB by DME 4 London, which is the London VOR. At D6 London, turn right, intercept 053 bearing towards Chilton NDB, cross London or radial 305 at or above 4000. London radial 326 at or above 5000 to Chilton NDB at 6000. Turn right, intercept Brookman's Park 244 inbound to Brookman's Park BOR. So let's go ahead and set that up. So back over in, in the, the cockpit, MCDU. we've got our chart on the right hand side and our navigation display on the left hand side in plan mode. So if we go over to the MCDU and we go to flight plan, departure, Echo Golf Lima Lima. Runway 27 right, we said, and Brookman's Park 7 Foxtrot. Insert that over there. There you can see it's drawn it on the navigation display. But we've got a discontinuity here between the two weight points. So we go down to the discontinuity here. We press clear. We clear that up. There we go. So it's joined those two weight points there. Let me just zoom out a little bit. And there's our departure so so from the runway 27 right we'll take 3 dme to london 6 dme london between four and six thousand feet which you got that program in there four thousand five thousand six thousand feet by the chilton ndb and remaining at six thousand feet all the way to the brookman's park vor so now what we can do to further enhance our situational awareness is we can go over to the RADNAV page and on the VOR1 frequency we can put in the VOR frequency for the London VOR which, which is 113.6 that can go in there and then if we put on the VOR display indicator over here let me just put it back to arc mode you can see on the left hand side here it's got the London VOR 1.3 nautical miles so as you take off on runway 27 right and you fly away from the VOR it's going to give you the distance that you're flying away from the VOR there at the bottom left hand corner of the navigation display so you'll be able to see when you are 3 DME away from London 6 and so on and so forth another thing we can do is take advantage of the new fix page that they've implemented so if we go to flight plan and we click on echo golf lima lima fix info and we can draw some fixes and radials and radiuses around on this navigation display so let's start with um, the london vor so we'll put in reference fix one will be lima oscar november We'll select the closest one, which is this one. As you can see, it's only one nautical mile away. So that's that one. And it brings it up on the navigation display. And then we can put in radials and radiuses around it. So if I put in a 3 DME radius around it, you'll see it'll draw a radius around it over there. So that's 3 nautical mile radius there. So if I change that to 4, you'll see it's there. And if I change it to 6, you'll see that's the six nautical mile radius there we can also draw in these radials from the London VOR so here the radial 305 305 you can put in there and it draws that radial there to there and 326 to there it draws a 326 degree radial now I know we already have this on the navigation display but let's say for example this goes off or sometimes A310X MCDU it deletes the departure or the arrival highly unlikely to happen in the sim but it could happen so this is more just for reference when you're flying if you want to use it you can put in more fixes as well if you go to the next page reference fix 2 
we can maybe put in a if you want to draw the line that goes across here this radial here from the Burnham VOR you can put in Bravo Uniform Romeo select that one over there and there it pops up on the ND and you could have that radial if you want so you can draw the it's a 297 heading so the radial will be the reciprocal of that so it'll be 117 and there it is over there that's you can see the radial when you turn you will able to see that radial over there so you know if this goes off you'll turn you'll have your DME here and you can turn it right and continue the right turn you can do it as well if you want to put in the Chilton VR you can put in the Charlie Hotel Tango put that in reference fix 3 there it is there and it'll draw it on the end key over there and you can put in the radials as well if you want to so it's 233 three. there it is over there so if I had to remove this departure from the flight plan let's go Echo Golf Lima Lima departure 27 right and then insert that without the standard instrument departure and that disappears you can basically still see this departure on the ND Council 3 DME from London VOR then you will turn right to a heading of 297 then you will turn right to a heading of 053 and then you will turn and the Chilton VOR you'll turn right to a heading of 064 I didn't put that in there but we can if we go back to the fixed page uh, it was number 3 there's the Chilton radial and we can put in another one which was 064 which uh, this one's actually a heading there it is there so I know it looks a little bit messy on the ND at the moment but that's just an example of what can be done with the fixed page just for reference so let me put the departure back in and then we'll go ahead and fly this departure okay so here we are on runway 27 right just a reminder so we're going to be taking off on runway 27 right we're going to be flying to 3dme london vor then we're going to turn right to a heading of 297 going to fly towards the Burnham VOR at 6 DME from London we are going to turn right to a heading of 053 once we intercept the 3 five degree radial of the London VOR we must be above 4000 but below 6000 on the 326 three degree radial we must be above 1000 above 5000 but below 6000 then once we get to the Chilton VOR we, at 6000 feet we're going to turn right to heading of 064 and we're going to fly to the Brookmans Park VOR at 6000 feet so let's take off going to throttle up 40 Toga There's 80 knots, 100 knots. So if I can stay on the center line, it's V1 rotates. Positive rate of climb, gear up. Yeah, you can see the, the increase in the nautical miles for the London VOR as we fly away from it.
There's one nautical mile from it. Set levers to climb. There's 2.5 DME. Three, so we're gonna okay, there's four, so we're going to start our right turn now. There's green S speed, so we're going to put the flaps up. Coming up on six miles from the London VR. So we continue our turn. So we're already well above 4,000 feet, so that's okay where we need to be. Pitch up a little bit. A bit of an overspeed going here, so we just want to slow back down to 250 knots. Yeah, we're coming up 6,000 feet, so I'm going to put on the autopilot and it's going to continue the turn for us. Yeah, we're coming up to that first radial where we need to be above 4,000, but we're really well above that. Clean up the aircraft, some on the speed brakes, turn off the runway, turn off lights, and the nose wheel lights. We're only at 6,000 feet, so we can set standard. We're going to fly towards the Chilton VR where we need to be at 6,000 feet. What is that noise? Oh, we've since we set standard, we need to climb. Because of the high pressure, we were well above, still well below 6,000 feet, flight level 060. So as we climb back up to 060, there that noise goes away. And there it is, level at 060 at Chilton VOR. So now we're just going to head to Brookman's Park VOR at flight level 060. And that is your standard instrument departure. If you guys have any questions on standard instrument departures, leave it in the comment below. Hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a like, consider subscribing for the next one, and let me know what you'd like to see from the channel. Thanks for watching.